Lincoln and others in the North thought, and I'd like you to elaborate on why they thought this and what the merits of it are, that the Civil War was a test of whether not just American democracy, but world democracy would survive. Now, what led them to that point of view? That point of view grows out of about 2,000 years of experience, um, just under that, maybe, by the time of the Civil War. Because non-monarchical, non-despotic forms of government in uh, the Western world were very few and far between over the course of history. And uh, based on the experience of the Greeks and the Romans and then various city-states in uh, medieval Europe, um, it had entered common uh, political philosophy uh, it, that republics are inherently unstable and short-lived, that uh, they tend to degenerate, either disintegrate into anarchy or in the course of doing so uh, uh, evolve into the equivalent of a Caesar-type regime or give way to monarchy. Um, and so this is the set of assumptions that the North American Republic inherits, the sense that uh, its republic and form of government is fragile. And that sense is reinforced by the fact that republic and form of government is, and this is something, again, that uh, modern students have a hard time remembering, very uncommon in the world of the mid-19th century. Right. The norm is still aristocracies and monarchies. Right. Uh, so the sense that the Civil War may spell the end of Republican government in the United States and therefore prove once again that Republican government is uh, a futile experiment yep. uh, is not only powerful in the United States, Europeans right. have the same view on both sides of the question, right. both small R Republicans and the pro-monarchical forces uh, are looking at the United States to see uh, whether or not this old assumption is going to be proved out. And as I understand it, at the time, after the revolutions of 1848 in Europe, there was a resurgence of uh, pro-monarchical attempts to install monarchical governments or to retain monarchical governments rather than have Republican or Democratic governments. Yes, all across the face of Europe, 1848 yeah. is a year of great hope yeah. because here are republics sprouting up um, yeah. like newly grown grass. Right. And within a year, they're all destroyed right. and replaced again right. by new forms of right. monarchical government. And, and as I gather it, a lot of the Republicans, and for that matter, the mo monarchists of Europe thought that if the North loses this war, if the South succeeds in seceding, what you're going to get is a constant stream of secession so that uh, the United States would be, or what was once the United States, would begin to look like Germany right. with a host of principalities in the 1700s. Exactly right, and there was good reason to think that too, and Northerners were concerned with that. Because, and uh, in this respect, I think they're right. There's th the, their thinking goes like this. We are now, pre-Civil War, a very large and v diverse society. Many regions disagree with decisions the federal government makes on specific issues, but they don't leave on that account because membership in this very large market, number one, and number two, in a what is in fact powerful society militarily, ha uh, offers more rewards uh, than withdrawing would bring. However, once you start chipping away at this market, and chipping away at the political and military power of this society, uh, the uh, gravi gravity holding other sections in the Union will decline. I always try to get centrifugal and centripetal forces into this story, but I can never remember which is which. Um, and so once the South is gone, then the Western states will have less reason to stay in, and the next time they have a disagreement, they might decide to opt out, might decide to opt out and join the South. The mayor of New York City is talking about taking New York out of the Union and making it into a free state. Yeah. New yep. York City, it's, all, it's useful to remember, uh, has a history by 1860 of probably being the most pro-Southern yeah. city in the North. Yeah. 
because of their investment in the slave trade. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.org.